ಓಂ ಭದ್ರಂ ಕರ್ಣೆ ಶೃಣುಯಾಮ ದೇವಾ ಓಂ ಭದ್ರಂ ಕರ್ಣೆ ಶೃಣುಯಾಮ ದೇವಾ ಭದ್ರಂ ಪಶ್ಯೇ ವಾಕ್ಷಭಿರ್ಯಜತ್ರ ಭದ್ರಂ ಪಶ್ಯೇ ವಾಕ್ಷಭಿರ್ಯಜತ್ರ ಸ್ಥಿರೈರಂಗೈ ಸುಷ್ಟು ವಾಗುಂ ಸಸ್ತನೂಭಿ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿನೂಷಾಶ್ವೇದೇದ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿನಸ್ತಾಕ್ಷ್ಯೋ ಅರಿಷ್ಟನೇಮಿ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿನಸ್ತಾಕ್ಷ್ಯೋ ಅರಿಷ್ಟನೇಮಿ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿನೋ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿರ್ದಾತು ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿನೋ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿರ್ದಾತು ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಸೇಷೋಂತಶ್ಚರತೆ ಬಹುಧಾ ಜಾಯಮಾನ ಸೇಷೋಂತಶ್ಚರತೆ ಬಹುಧಾ ಜಾಯಮಾನ ಓಂ ಧ್ಯಾಥ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಓಂ ಉಪಾಸನ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಪ್ರಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ all the mumukshus to do this upasana om iti brahma so superimposing brahman on om they have to do the upasana and it even gave a beautiful analogy for this where it said that om is the dhanus om is the bow and your own mind is like an arrow the mind has to be again what kind of mind it is a samskritam manaha okay which is which is well prepared by values and also by karma yoga okay so because being a karma yogi and having the right attitudes if you have a certain mastery over your desires okay your likes and dislikes raga and dvesha correct ತಯೋರ್ನ ವಶಂ ಆಗಚ್ಛೇತ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೇ ಡೂ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎನಿ ಡಿಸೈರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಕಾಮನ್ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಈವನ್ ಅಮಂಗ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಆರ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ದ ಡಿಸೈರ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ರಾಂಗ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಇಚ್ಛಾ ಶಕ್ತಿ right now we celebrated navratri also so devi is looked upon ichcha shakti kriya shakti jnana shakti even mumuksha is denotes an ichcha for moksha correct jignasa denotes a desire for knowledge so desire is not. then what is a problem coming under the spell of your likes and dislikes or longing for something thinking that if i don't have something i will not be happy or the other way of thinking is what if something is there i cannot be happy this kind of a thinking is the problem then you are under the spell of your own likes and dislikes raga and dvesha if you are under the spell of your likes and dislikes that only actually reinforces that you are a small jeeva you are an individual caught up in this huge world and you can't do much about it so it's a problem so 
the first step is what for a mumukshu is doing karma with a yoga buddhi with the right attitude developing prasada buddhi prasada is not only in the temples prasada is not only when you do naivedyam during your puja but that prasada buddhi has to be extended in your day to day life so whatever karma phala which we are getting for all the karma which we do of course the understanding is that if you are a mumukshu even the karma that you do is as per dharma you cannot be an adharmi and say that i will accept whatever ishwara gives to me as prasada that doesn't make any sense because if you are an adharmi means again you are a ragi okay you have why do you do adharma because you think that you want you want to gain something which you like so being a an adharmi you cannot be a yogi only a dharmika can be a yogi one who follows dharma alone can be a yogi there is no doubt in that but further even dharma karya we can do as kamya karma okay to fulfill some desire so you may have a longing for something and you are still trying to gain something you dharmika as a dharmi by following dharma by having certain moral and ethical values but even then you are only a jiva you are not a yogi when do you, you become a yogi you become a yogi only when you are able to accept the results of the action as prasada from ishwara and have a samatva buddhi so if you have samatva buddhi with regards to the results of the action then you you learn to get out of the spell of this raga and dvesha okay once you get out of the spell of this raga and dvesha you are supposed to have a pure mind antakarana shuddhi you are having then that is what we call antakarana shuddhi so purity of mind means what you are committed to what is right and wrong in a situation rather than what you like or dislike so that is the important thing here so a mind which is prepared well prepared in fact sanskritam manaha means what a mind which is again well prepared by what by all these things only by karma yoga by upasana and that mind is the arrow and this arrow where the, where is the target of this arrow because if you have a bow and an arrow you are targeting something and also when you target you have to be alert and only be focused on the target correct you cannot be focused on anything else even the upanishad says apramattena vedhavyam apramattaha means one who is alert one who is not indifferent so such a mind focused this arrow is focused on what brahma brahma tal lakshyam uchyate brahman is the lakshyam that is the target so like this you have to do upasana by chanting om so om chanting is generally given only for sanyasis understand this if you are a householder and keep chanting om then you may become a sanyasi also swami ji used to say this i don't know how true it is because i myself i have not chanted om as it is <laughs> i have chanted more of my ishta devata mantra mantra japa also is equally good whatever you are able to do but om also you can practice or you can do gayatri japa which is supposed to be a, an expression of om only okay because each eight the gayatri has 24 matras and the each one the each eight pada a pada of eight matras is supposed to be one matra of the om om itself is supposed to have three matras so like that we can take and gayatri also if you look at the meaning it is nothing but 
Mahavakya because the Gayatri says that the Savita Devata who is fit to be worshipped by us, who is everything, who is all knowledge, should is the one who is also uh, who is also impelling my mind and my buddhi. So that means it is a Mahavakya, the same. The Sarva, Sarva Gnaha, Sarva Vit, in fact we are going to see that later in the next verse here also, is the same person who is also leading my mind, my buddhi. There is no difference. The same Brahman as consciousness is manifest as awareness in my mind. Is the same Brahman which is manifest as all knowing Ishwara. There is no difference. So, like that, you can, you have to do upasana, you have to do dhyana, but not for as a mental karma. So, here as a mumuksu and a jigyasu, you are doing this dhyana only to assimilate the teaching. That's why it says Brahma Talakshyam Bhavati. So, even the word Om. The meaning of the word Om can be taken as Ishwara, but the Lakshanartha, the Vachyartha of Om is Ishwara, the all-knowing Ishwara. The Lakshanartha of Om is nothing but Brahman. Okay. So similarly, Om can also be looked up as the, you can superimpose the sleeper, dreamer and the waker, the individual on Om. So Om can also mean the Jiva then. But that is Vachyartha again, the Lakshanartha of that is Brahman alone. So Om, also when you look at the Lakshyam of Om, it is Brahman. So Lakshanartha means that which is implied rather than the direct meaning of words. Whatever we understand by implication, that alone is important because Brahman cannot be the meaning of any one particular word. Understand that. If Brahman becomes the meaning of one word, then it will become limited to that particular meaning or object. Correct? And it won't be any more Ananta. So, that's why we say Brahman, we say Yato Vacho Nivartante Aprapya Manasasaha. Or we say Aprameyam. Some people get confused. <laughs> We say that you have to learn this Brahman, you should have knowledge and all this. But Brahman itself is talked about as Aprameyam, that which cannot be known. So, Yen Manasana Manute, another Upanishad says, Yato Vacho Nivartante Aprapya Manasasaha means from which words return back along with the mind. So, what does it all mean? It only means that. Brahman is not an object of knowledge. It is not the meaning of any particular word. So if you negate all the objects, what is left is only you, correct? It is yourself. That is what is revealed so beautifully. Is it clear? So it is very simple. Brahman is you being yourself. It cannot be known as an object. And it is not the meaning of any one particular word. In fact, it is the meaning of all the words you can say, because Brahman is everything, it is the cause of everything. But it is not the meaning of any one particular word. Then it will become like Zen, okay? But that's how we have to teach this, because the subject matter is subtle. It has to be taught using, although seemingly contradictory statements. So anyway, so coming back here, so, Om Iti Evam Dhyayata, here, so next verse, so once it has told that, it has given that analogy, that you have to target this Brahman with a well prepared mind as an arrow and Om being the bow, which propels this arrow towards Brahman. Then what is this Brahman? That is also again talked about. The next few verses are all about that only. So, Ara Iva Rathana this we saw briefly last time also. Samhata Yatra Nadhyaha, so here Nadi is also talked about. Again, the meaning of Nadi can be blood vessels or nerves also. 
it is difficult to translate some of these sanskrit words into english okay so exactly what was meant by a nadi we don't know maybe ayurveda they have a certain definition of nadi so here what it says is all the nadis are like spokes and they all go to this brahman which is like the hub so all the nadis in your body also are are yoked you can say correct are joined to the brahman as as the hub so like this we can look at it okay and what is this particular uh, nadi when we say there are n number of nadis okay all of them are like spokes and again they are bahuda jayamana okay antas charate so this brahman itself is available as many different things it is born as many different beings and that brahman is available in your mind also correct it is it goes uh within your mind as to yes tat srishtva tadeva anupravishate so like that anupravishya shruti is there anupravesha shruti shruti we call it that means having created this entire world the world everything is not jadam in this world so brahman itself entered as awareness into this all the beings so that's why it is available in your mind and in that brahman which is self existent and self revealing which is also available in your mind as awareness that is where all these nadis are also clustered you can say they are all joining together like spokes on a hub and so then what that brahman you meditate upon as om correct om iti evam dhyayata so that brahman you meditate upon okay so using om omkara is the is the pratika pratika means it's a sound symbol i said so it can be many things can be superimposed on this omkara and you can meditate it but whichever way you meditate finally the lakshyam of that omkara is nothing but brahman so that meditation has to help you to assimilate this knowledge whatever you have heard from the guru whatever is revealed by the shruti this meditation has to help you to assimilate that so it is also part of the pramana vyapara this is this is what we call nididhyasanam so here shruti is talking about nididhyasana so you meditate upon this self in this manner evam means in this manner with the help of omkara om iti evam dhyayata and atmanam om okay so atmanam om iti evam dhyayata then swasti vaha paraya so swasti means may there be auspiciousness for for you okay for vaha is plural so for you for all of you all the mukshus may be may be, be an auspicious end we can say okay so we can say that may there be an auspicious end for all of you that is what is said here paraya means what again for crossing and crossing what see when do we get this auspicious end 
when we cross tamas tamasaha para for crossing of this ignorance tamas here means ignorance so only when once you transcend this ignorance we have to say or destroy the ignorance again here you understand one thing normally we think that we are stupid we are ignorant like this that is also part of being a jiva being a limited person but what we have to understand is i am that that consciousness which illumines both ignorance and knowledge that is me understand that so when you say i don't know something that also is knowledge correct that is also being revealed by which uh, consciousness or when you say i know something that is also revealed by which consciousness that is you so you are not ignorance also ignorance also belongs only to the upadhi you are the you are the upadhika chaitanyam you are the consciousness which is appearing as the ignorant awareness in your mind you are not the ignorant person also you are the one who is revealing everything who is self revealing self existent that is the teaching that is the truth that has to be assimilated so this is like another analogy we give in the tradition is what sun is there now sun can be covered by a cloud correct but who is revealing the cloud also if there is no sun you can't see even the cloud so the sun is revealing the cloud which itself is covering the cloud also <laughs> so something like that so here ignorance also is revealed by the chaitanyam only knowledge also is revealed by chaitanyam but because of that ignorance is revealed you think that you are an ignorant person also that is the problem so it's only an understanding that i am neither ignorant nor knowledgeable person in fact that is the truth i am not even a jnani understanding that is jnana in fact so anyway so how do we go beyond this ignorance or cross ignorance is to understand that i am neither ignorance nor knowledge i am shuddha chaitanyam so that is the thing so that's what so the guru here is actually uh, blessing the shishya you can say so parastat means after this after this means what after this teaching so tamasaha paraya parastat parastat means after this after this means here what is being done here the guru is teaching the shishya correct so after this teaching may you cross over ignorance and let there be an auspicious end for your pursuit because even this pursuit of atma gnanam has to come to an end at some point correct and that will come to an end only when you get established in this knowledge well established so we saw up to this verse last week now we'll continue with the next verse again which is a very very important verse which is again which shows you the swarupa of this knowledge okay so yes sarvagnya yes sarvagnya sarvavit sarvavit yasyesha mahima bhuvi yasyesha mahima bhuvi दिव्ये ब्रह्मपुरे ह्येश दिव्ये ब्रह्मपुरे ह्येश ओम व्योम न्यात्मा प्रतिष्ठितः व्योम न्यात्मा प्रतिष्ठितः मनोमय प्राण शरीरे शरीर नेता मनोमय प्राण शरीर नेता प्रतिष्ठितोन्ने हृदयं सन्निधाय प्रतिष्ठितोन्ने हृदय सन्निधाय तद् विज्ञानेन परिपश्यन्ति धीराः तद् 
ತದ್ವಿಜ್ಞಾನೇನ ಪರಿಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಧೀರ ಆನಂದ ರೂಪಂ ಅಮೃತ ಯದ್ ವಿಭಾತಿ ಆನಂದ ರೂಪಂ ಅಮೃತ ಯದ್ ವಿಭಾತಿ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ರಿವೀಲ್ಡ್ using certain words which were already used by the upanishad in fact sarvagnya sarvavit these two words were already used by the upanishad yaha means this self the one who is what all knowing in general sarvagnya means all knowing in general sarvavit means all knowing in specific detail the one who knows everything in detail and that can only be ishwara understand this so here a jnani also can be a sarvagnya how because the jnani knows that all that is here is brahman okay so that is in general you are a sarvagnya all that is here is brahman and brahman alone is satyam brahman alone matters all the other things are only mithya they cannot be even counted as to all that is here is only one which is brahman and if you are able to see this whole world as brahman then you are a sarvagnya ha sarvavit means what sarvavit only ishwara can be sarvavit because with the upadhi which a jiva has this avidya will always be there some form of avidya because with the jiva upadhi with our mind we have to always operate a means of knowledge and only know things through that okay even sometime recently i saw that the nasa has announced that there are some trillions of galaxies are there in the known universe they say in fact the word they use this that means there is a known universe so even with all the telescopes and radio telescopes whatever with enhanced perception also we know so many things are there trillions of galaxies are there but that is also we have to prefix it as known universe only because there still there are unknown things also are there that is the vastness of this creation so as a, as a jiva it's always going to be known also will be there in this creation unknown also will be there you can't do anything about it but the known and unknown everything that is here is brahman that is sarvagnya the one who knows that sarva vit means that ishwara upadhi does not require a mind or a pramana to operate that ishwara upadhi is sarva vit that's the maya upadhi we say ishwara is the maya we and the maya upadhi ishwara has means what if brahman identifies with this maya upadhi as a maya we that is ishwara and ishwara is sarva vit because ishwara's sarvagnyatvam only is manifest as this or the sarva vetritvam i have to say in this case is manifest as this jagat as this creation so ishwara appears or manifests as this creation by identifying with one's own knowledge so that is the sarva vetritvam so that is what here is called as sarva vit so the one who is, who is sarvagnya and one who is sarva vit and again once mahima okay so yes ya mahima is this so this is his glory that he is all knowing all knowing in general all knowing in particular and that is the glory and when this word glory mahima is used shankara also is giving some shankara goes into what is the mahima okay because yesha mahima means yesha means that which is known to us as this whatever is known to you as this is all ishwara's glory 
and that means again the glory itself when we say this glory it is prasiddha mahima means that is well known that is as ishwara's glory it is prasiddha it is well known as ishwara's glory whatever is here and what kind of glory it is so shankara says because of ishwara's mandate alone the earth remains in its orbit it's all ishwara's order that is what is talked about as mahima here okay so that we have to understand so dyava prithivyav shasane vidrite tishtatah yasya ime so this dyava and prithivi the space and earth they are all in a certain order all the planets are going in certain orbits and even surya and chandra because of whose order alone they are also going around okay and only because of whose order or shasana yasya shasane like that shankara is saying all the waters rivers and seas they do not cross their limits and even if they cross their limit that is also part of ishwara's order only tsunami comes sometimes but again it goes back correct so because of whose order this whole world is in an order that ishwara that is the glory of ishwara so shankara very clearly talks about that here and even he says stavaram jangamam cha yasya shasane niyatam so all the plants and the animals okay they are all moving around correct and they are all growing and they are doing whatever they are supposed to do because of whose mandate we can say correct or order and finally what because of whose mandate only everybody gets their the results of their actions also correct because this karma phala is supposed to be avashyam bhavi you will definitely get the results of the action sometimes it may take some more time sometimes it may take less time but karma phala you will definitely get because that is also part of ishwara's order so sometimes we sow some seeds they germinate immediately correct in couple of days some seeds are like that then i heard there is one variety of bamboo i think it is called chinese bamboo or something where you put the seed it doesn't germinate so easily or even if it germinates it doesn't come up as a sapling it keeps growing its roots all the time and after 5 6 years suddenly it starts growing within a week it grows from 50 feet or something i heard okay so that is also part of ishwara's order so all these things are all whatever we find in this jagat in this created world it's all a miracle only i would say it's all a marvel so all these marvelous things which we see in this creation are all nothing but the glory of ishwara so that's what here so mahima so this mahima whose mahima yes yeah yes a mahima who we so in this world we see and divye brahma pure yes okay vyomni atma pratishtitah so the self evident atma so till now whatever is talked about is brahman or ishwara okay brahman as ishwara the tatpada see when we talk about tatva masi as a mahavakya when we talk about sarvajna sarvavit and all these glories of ishwara it is talking about the tatpada which is ishwara so brahman as ishwara was talked about till now then what 
the twampada is now talked about okay so the same self evident brahman also abides in your buddhi vyomni means space but here it is actually means your your intellect okay the place where this brahman has as though entered has done anupravesha and this available as awareness okay so that is where this brahman is available in your buddhi so it is manifest as awareness and it is called brahmapura means brahmapura means literally where brahman exists or where it is recognized we have to say in this case so only in your buddhi you have to recognize this brahman and it is available there as the awareness for you to recognize so nowhere else you can recognize the brahman correct knowledge has to take place only in your mind so manasa eva anudrashtavyam like that also upanishad vakya is there but the same upanishad says brahman is beyond your mind so that brahman is beyond your mind also you have to understand using your mind only so that knowledge also has to take place in your mind that doesn't mean that some people say brahman is beyond mind so don't study any shastra go and sit some place dive deep within yourself and try to transcend your mind and all that transcending the mind means what understanding that you are not the mind that's all is transcending the mind and mind also is nothing but mithya because it is also objectified all your thoughts are also objects of your consciousness they rise in consciousness they are sustained by the consciousness they resolve back into consciousness that consciousness is you that is what is transcending your mind so that you want to understand this understanding has to take place only in your mind and so brahman wherever brahman is recognized that is brahmapura and that is space that is the intellect yomni brahmapure in this place only this yesha atma pratishtita so whatever was talked about as sarvagya and sarvavit is now talked about as your atma see that itself is an identity so this atma is abiding in your mind and is available for you to recognize that so again some people may even <laughs> try to interpret this brahmapura as some kind of a brahma loka or goloka brindavan or whatever so that is not the point here so here this vyomni means it is awareness it's a space of awareness that is there in your buddhi in your intellect okay so again so this awareness is there whether thoughts are there or not awareness is always there and that awareness is you that's what we have to understand whether there are thoughts in your mind or you have managed to uh, curb all the thoughts even in a thoughtless mind in a thoughtless space also awareness is there which is brahman and that is what one has to recognize so this vyoman means space also in general we also use the word chidakasha so the chaitanya is compared to space i think that is because of to to tell you that it is all encompassing all pervading because in the created jagat all pervasiveness we can understand with reference to space very easily space pervades everything you can create a pot and say that i have created a pot space in reality nobody has created any pot space the space is there as space or mahakasha when you created a pot you have you have only created even the walls of the pot are in space only but still we say there is a pot space and when the pot breaks what we say as though the pot space is now merged with the original space or mahakasha but pot is only a upadi okay there is 
at least in space you can say that really that you have created two uh, whatever chambers and all that but in chaitanyam everything is chaitanyam alone that is why the word akasha can be used for wherever this awareness is is obtaining is manifest that place is called akasha also okay so here this is nothing but your buddhi because through your buddhi only or in your buddhi only this awareness is accommodated because one of the definitions of space we give in sanskrit is what avakasha pradatr akasha we say so that which accommodates is space so the physical space accommodates all the physical things your buddhi only accommodates all the things which you are aware of correct all the vrittis all your thoughts all your knowledge everything which takes place in the form of a vritti in your mind everything is accommodated only in your buddhi so that is why this buddhi also can can be called as a space okay and sometimes this is called as chidakasha or chidambara also correct chidambara temple nanala is there the same thing okay because even in this upanishad we talked about this otaha otam protam we say so this entire jagat is woven in this in this chaitanya mul correct like a cloth this woven woven with yarn this entire creation is woven in chaitanyam alone that's why chidambaram also is okay we use the word chidambaram also chidakasha also all these words are used so here anyway what we understand from this is this is really a mahavakya this part because the first line is talking about tatpada and the second line is talking about tvampada and the same thing is available as both ishvara and jiva or it is manifest the same brahma is manifest as both and further manomaya prana sharira neta is even making it even more clearer here so the same brahman which is sarvagnyah and sarvavit is, is also the one which is leading your mind okay so that is what is manomaya so manomaya means one which has the mind okay as the upadhi so when it has mind as the upadhi it becomes a thinker where all the thoughts are obtaining correct so that is the individual and again atma is is again available or recognized by the modifications of the mind that's why it is called manomaya here so any thought which obtains in your mind only reveals your awareness understand that as i told you already the thoughts arise in this chaitanyam they are sustained by the same chaitanyam revealed by the chaitanyam and they resolve back into the same chaitanyam so that chaitanya atma is present whether you have thoughts or not but to recognize this chaitanya atma you still require these thoughts in the mind okay the correct thoughts so that's why atma is manomaya okay so this atma is manifest in the forms of various modi- modifications of your mind that is what is the meaning of this manomaya and this also prana sharira neta which leads your prana and sharira so prana sharira here means actually subtle body we have to take because prana is part of the subtle body or we can say it is the one which leads the prana and also sharira physical body like that also we can take 
so again here what the prana is the life principle correct only when there is prana there is life in the body and that also is nothing but this atma alone that is what is shown here and the jiva is the one who is leading or the one who is having this subtle body okay that's what we normally think but even that jiva is nothing but this atma alone this brahman alone so brahman when it is conditioned by this subtle body this physical body as a as a upadi then it is called jiva the same brahman alone is called as jiva the same brahman when we look at it through the upadi of maya this ishvara so there is only one thing it depends on what glasses you are wearing correct if you wear a red glass and look at spatikam it may be looking it look you may say that it is a red stone if you wear a blue glass and look at it then you may say it is sapphire or something it is the same spatika it doesn't change what is changing is only how it is conditioned okay also the conditioning also is apparently conditioned not in reality understand that so again what happens so there is a karma this subtle body the jiva is undergoing a certain karma so this neta here means what the this it is led how is it led prana sharira neta api how is it is saying is it is leading your prana and sharira how through what mechanism law of karma karma only is leading everything correct this is the order because of karma only we are going through so many experiences all that is through the this sukshma sharira subtle body and so again by compelled by this law of karma only what will happen this stool sharira will give up a physical sharira also and again take another body so this stool sharira will be there it is it goes through different physical bodies and it can express itself according to the physical body bodies limitations only the stool sharira also expresses itself so in a human body it is able to express itself in a particular manner in a deva sharira it may be able to express in a different way in an animal sharira it will be able to only express itself in a certain way so like that this stool sharira is led by this law of karma only that's what we have to understand so so again what we have to understand here is the stool sharira itself cannot do anything by itself it does not it is also in one way jada only okay and again atma by itself brahman by itself also cannot do anything it doesn't do any action in reality it is all pervasive also but then what do we, what is it that takes this birth death and all that so that is again it is like the part space being born correct i told you so here the part analogy is the best way to understand the space is space but when a part is created we say as though a new part space is created and it is limited and all that so if you look at it as part space then it is limited but even when it is a part space real in reality it is nothing but the space alone the limitation is only with respect to the part upadi and what if that part upadi goes away then nothing so but till the time that upadi is there it is as though limited okay 
so that is what we have to understand here this this limitation is nothing but it is only mithya it is only from the standpoint of the upadi the conditioning factor okay and further what anne pratishtitah so when it says it 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 abides in food also this brahman this atma so anne means then it is physical body also we have to take because the food only becomes your physical body correct by eating food only this body grows whatever it is you eat only is getting deposited mostly it gets deposited and around your stomach after a certain age so like that the body the physical body is nothing but a modification of the food which we eat and that also is nothing but brahman so so how does it abide by then okay hridayam sannidhaya so hridayam sannidhaya means what by presiding over your buddhi so hridayam here means buddhi again so the atma is available in the physical body okay and being available in the physical body only it is available as in your buddhi also so basically atma is is manifest as the awareness in your buddhi and being manifest as the awareness in your buddhi only it is also abiding in your physical body okay so that's what we have we have to understand here so from these things what we clearly understand is it looks that there are two things here correct this ishwara was talked about when sarvagnya sarvavit and mahima was talked about then it looks like jiva is talked about when it is talking about manomaya ha prana sharira neta and all that so are there two things really no there is only one okay so that ishwara and jiva are only from the standpoint of upadi one is the total another is the individual but both the total and individual are nothing but brahman all that is here is only one and that is this brahman alone so that is what we have to understand here so further what so this is how it is see brahman is available as ishwara brahman is available also as jiva so those who have ignorance look at all these things as separate things and they suffer but what about the people who have knowledge those who are able to discriminate all these things properly dhiraha so those who are gnanis okay those who are dhiraha tad vijnanena so tad here means what this atma tattva only this brahman okay and vijnanena also it says it doesn't say just gnanena it is vijnanam means it is a knowledge born out of the teaching of the shastra understand that that is why vijnana here so that alone is a complete knowledge it is not somebody's fancy fancy full uh, speculation okay somebody's personal speculation or anything it is vijnana born out of a pramana vyapara and the pramana here is the shastra okay again this vijnana will take place only if you are an adhikari you have to have the different qualifications 
you should have vairagya you should have mumukshutvam and also sama and dama etc sama dama adi shatka sampatti all these things help you okay so such a person only is called dhiraha dhiraha here dhiraha means generally dhiraha means one who has discrimination but here we also have to take a dhiraha here means one who is qualified to know this one who has all the qualifications okay and one of the main things which shankara keeps talking about whenever he talks about this jnana and vijnana is what he says you should have vairagya this vairagya is talked about particularly because why it is being talked about you have to understand the vision is that you are everything you are the cause of everything you are the atma of everything you are the self of everything you are available as all these things which are which are there in this jagat that is the teaching and then you cannot say this belongs to me that belongs to me and you can, as a limited being you cannot go and hold on to small things correct it doesn't gel with the vision that is why I, in many places when i read through the bhashya shankara always stresses on vairagya i mean vairagya means you don't have to hate all these things and run away from something and all that whatever you have today you run away and where are you going to run away because many people have romantic notions about renunciation also so that also will not work this renunciation has to be in your mind more importantly in the understanding that none of the things which i gain in this world none of the things which i can get as karma phala or is going to really satisfy me that is the understanding then you will become objective towards all the things all the worldly pursuits are not going to make me satisfied so it doesn't interest me anymore so it is more like being disinterested in all these things rather than hating or running away or anything so this disinterestedness interestedness also is born out of certain analysis and a certain discrimination only understand that so that is what shankara many times talks about as an important qualification here and those who have gained this knowledge so what is the phalam ananda roopam amritam so this swarupa of the atma is nothing but ananda and this ananda is in the form of purnatvam you are the whole you don't lack anything you are not a wanting person anymore that is the ananda there is no bigger ananda than understanding that so this ananda is not about having some particular experience or like that okay it is not a modification of your mind also this is the ananda of knowing that you are the ananda in fact you are the ananda swarupa you are not a wanting person anymore you don't lack anything you are purnaha you are the whole and that is what is this ananda and that ananda and amritam also you are the one who is immortal not subjected to time immortal here means not subjected to space time so you are the ananda swarupa you are the fullness and you are also free from space time okay and that is this an atma tattva and this dhiraha they see this okay dhiraha paripashyanti so that is the important thing here so this atma only is yad vibhati so which atma is self revealing that atma you see this dhira c as the ananda and, and amritam ananda swarupam and amritam so that is what is the nature of this knowledge has been talked about here then we will continue with the next verses next week so once you gain this knowledge what happens what happens to the jnani 
also is talked about in the next verses. This is beautiful again. We'll see that next week. Om Purnamada Purnamidam. Om Purnamada Purnamidam. Purnat Purnamudachyate. Purnat Purnamudachyate. Purnasya Purnamadaya. Purnasya Purnamadaya. Purnameva Vashishyate. Purnameva Vashishyate. Om Sam Sishanti Shanti. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Hari Om Shri Guru Siyonamaha. Hari Om Shri Guru Siyonamaha. Hari Om. Hari Om.